Filipino mother of four, Amelita Depra, was diagnosed with goiter, an enlarged thyroid gland, two months ago. At under $4 a day, she works at a salon in Metro Manila as a freelance manicurist. It's supposed to be a temporary job. Amelita is hoping to secure an overseas job opportunity to work as a domestic worker in the Middle East. Like many Filipinos, she could barely save up for the future, much less buy all of her prescribed medication. On this day after work, she brings me to her home and shares this news with me. Ano ko sana nga makaalis ako kasi mahirap lang buhay namin. Gusto ko makatapos yung mga anak ko sa pag-aaral. Tapos ganito yung nangyari. Hindi ako makalipad kasi nga, may problema. Tapos na yung sugar ko. Kaya wala na ako magawa kasi yung si mismo yung nagsabi na hindi ako makakalipad. Like many Filipinos, Amelita rarely goes for medical checkups until a friend noticed a lump on her neck. Unable to afford medications for her condition, she turns to supplements that are cheaper. But these were not prescribed by her doctor. Essential medicines in the Philippines cost at least three times more than international prices, according to the Department of Health. With such steep medicine prices in the country, supplements not registered with the local Food and Drug Administration are openly sold to Filipinos, and they're marketed as cures to various ailments. The World Health Organization says substandard and falsified medical products may cause harm to patients and fail to treat diseases. We're here in Mambang Street, which is famous in Manila for pharmacies lined up selling cheap medicines and medical supplies. Let's find out why that is so. I'll ask about prices here using my medical prescription issued by my doctor. Pwede pang pa So, 150, ma'am. Ah, ala yung mas mura. Kasi the direct wholesaler kasi kami dito. Advocates say the government should create a national pool of medicines through bulk procurements to lower costs, instead of having each locality and medical facility buying medicines separately at different volumes and various price points. But the pharmaceutical sector in the Philippines argues that cheap does not always mean good for the patient. It's urging government to evaluate previous medicine suppliers to state-run medical facilities. Number one is patient safety, right? So patient safety, how, how have the patients experienced these drugs purchased by the government and how they, have they adhered to the patient safety regulations that have been set, po set forth by the Philippine FDA. The pharmaceutical sector in the Philippines also argues that revenues from pricier drugs of so-called innovator brands would help fund research for new medicines. Some big pharmaceutical companies have started selling drugs at a lower cost in countries with a greater need to make access to medicines more equitable. We group our countries into different tierings and these tierings is determined um, with regards to the economical dynamics of a country, so the GDP, the healthcare infrastructure framework of a country, the out-of-pocket segment, as well as the policies and enabling access to specific um, therapeutical areas. So pricing is determined on these economical factors and the dynamics of these countries. Still, medicine prices in the Philippines affect both the rich and the poor. According to the World Health Organization, as high as 75% of out-of-pocket health spending for the poorest Filipinos and 58% for the richest goes to medicines. Experts say the country's geography, with over 7,000 islands, also make the storing and distribution of medicines more challenging. I think a lot of issues in the health department stems from expired medicines because of 
uh, logistics and uh, management issues. We have really a huge problem if we buy a huge amount of drugs and then there's just blanket distribution. The government's long-term plan is to encourage local drug manufacturing by creating economic zones for pharmaceutical companies. We have to promote competition. There has to be many more brands, many more companies coming in. So not only do we allow products from the outside, but if we can actually manufacture those products locally, then why not? But until then, many Filipino patients are foregoing life-saving cures as they can't afford them choosing non-medicinal food supplements that are unlikely to treat their medical conditions. Pito heads the Philippines' largest union of healthcare workers employed in private hospitals. He says the government still owes their members an average of over 2,400 U.S. dollars each in allowances promised to them for service rendered during the pandemic, an amount that he says could pay their families' medical expenses. Personally, when I use it, I use my wife's use. Because my wife's use is now in the hospital kidney chronic disease, CKD. Uh, ang inaano ko lang dito, pag dialysis, kasi na, 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 na siya, nagkaroon siya ng kidney nung August. Kaya yan nagda-dialysis, siyempre, para sa akin, bilang isang asawa, health worker, napakalaking bagay na makakukuha ko yan na 135 na pambili rin ng gamot. Even as they care for others, health workers like Rene say there is little care for them. But the Philippines Department of Health says the allocated budget for payment of these allowances this 2024 is over 50% short of what is needed to pay off all the filed claims. At least 480 million US dollars more are needed to pay pending allowance claims. Beyond delayed allowances, low pay and job insecurity are driving many Filipino health workers to seek jobs abroad. Over 350,000 doctors, nurses, and midwives have left the Philippines to work abroad between 1990 and 2017. Health workers' rights activist Robert Mendoza points to a host of factors that's driving low morale among healthcare workers. Wala talagang totoong pagkalinga ng ating gobyerno pangangalaga sa ating mga health workers. Una, matagal na tayong nananawagan ng nakabubuhay na sahod. No? Uh, sa Southeast Asia, tayo ang pinakabarat magpasahod ng mga health workers. Pangalawa, uh, yung hindi makataong paggawa, no? yung, yung, uh, yung sinasabi na ratio ng nurse to patient ratio is 1 is to 12, hindi po yun nag nagagawa ng ating Department of Health. Public health specialist Dr. Michael Kaampued says healthcare workers deployed to rural areas and areas with high crime rates likewise face the risks linked to those communities. He says healthcare workers are often blamed by patients and their families for inadequately equipped health facilities. Patients have an expectation. Especially the ones that are when you're faced with a person that uh, a family with a dying patient, they wouldn't care if you're the nicest doctor, you know, if 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 their life or their son's life is on the line, they will they will really demand something that not that might not be there, because that's part of the grief, no? They they're trying to find someone to blame. To know more about healthcare workers' conditions on island communities in the Philippines, I join community nurse Rose de la Cruz on her journey to Talim Island, a two-hour boat ride from the mainland. More or less 30,000 residents live on this island in the middle of the Philippines' largest lake. There is only one two-bed capacity birthing facility catering to all 17 villages here. So the local government is constructing this so-called infirmary hospital to expand the range of services offered to patients for free. The expansion includes plans for an emergency area and some laboratory services. 
On this day, a town doctor from the mainland came on a visit, but this happens only one to two days a month due to the work commitments he has in the mainland. This means Nurse Rose and other midwives here are left to run the rural health unit where she has worked for the past 30 years. Walang, walang nurse na yung willing magstay dito. Tapos yung kakulan nga, nga ng nurses ng isla. Kasi nga dito, bilang nurse, kahit na sabihin mo, ang pasok mo ay 8 to 5 lang. Pagdating sa bahay, marami pa rin pumupunta sa'yo. Sabi na natin, 24-7 ka. Healthcare workers also face dangers related to transport woes. In 2023, a midwife deployed to the island died as the boat she was on capsized. Midwife Femari Ocampo was working towards securing her nursing license so she can provide better quality of care. As she was living in another town, she had to stay at least three days a week on Talim Island, where she was deployed to avoid long travel each day. Femari's dedication has inspired those who knew her. na inspire po ako sa kanya kasi marami po siya natulungan. Katulad nga po sabi ni Mami, naging bayani po si Nani. Lalo po akong na-inspire sa kanya kasi gusto ko rin po maging mag-nursing po ako. Gusto ko pong sundin yung yapak ng nani ko. Gusto ko pong marami po akong matulungan na ibang tao. At gusto ko pong matupad yung pangarap ko sa akin ng nani. Despite the perils of healthcare work in rural areas, Nurse Rose finds moments of pure joy. Pagka nakapanganak na po sila, pag narinig mo na yung iyak ng baby, ayun po, ang sarap sa pakiramdam. Pagka, kasi hindi siya damit na nabutas na tatahiin mo, di ba? Buhay yung hawak mo. Kaya habang nagpapaanak ka sa totoo lang, dasal ka pa rin ng dasal na makarao silang mag-ina. Tapos pag okay na po, ayun, ang sarap na po sa pakiramdam. For as long as there is a patient in need, there will be healthcare workers like Nurse Rose. No matter the hardship, no matter the pain, finding joy in every life saved and every baby delivered. The world on a standstill has gone back to its daily grind. Once empty roads, now a city that came back to life. The Philippines continues to battle health inequities exposed by the outbreak, one year on since the end of the COVID-19 global health emergency. The family of 17-year-old Cyrus Lescano knows this all too well. They spent months at a Metro Manila hospital after Cyrus got infected with leptospirosis, a zoonotic disease that's endemic in the Philippines. The state health insurance covered only 2% of their 22,000 US dollar hospital bill, for which they are now deep in debt. To pay off the loan, his father Claro is working as a house painter. The land title for his relative's home served as collateral for the loan a common story among many Filipinos faced with health emergency. Kahit anong gawin kong... Yung... Kinocompute ko yung araw-araw kong kinikita dito, tapos yung binabayaran naman niya dun a day nun sa kwarto. Parang one week kong sweldo yun, eh, isang araw lang yun sa hospital. Sa kwarto lang. Kulang talaga. Experts admit a lower middle income country like the Philippines can only afford to cover health care expenses of the poorest population. The government must structure the health system in such a way that the poor are really given the necessary subsidy or assistance, including or in conjunction with the private sector. The private sector is willing to help. It cannot be equal for everybody in terms of the financial uh, return or, the, uh, or assistance that you give to the patient. 
State health insurance firm PhilHealth, however, has drawn flack for delayed payments of its financial obligations to private hospitals. Public health experts say premiums remitted to PhilHealth should be treated as your contribution to fund health care for those in need and a reflection of the values you hold as a nation. To prevent overloading hospitals, doctors say preventive care and early diagnosis are key. The government's plan is to build, by 2028, at least 28 primary and urgent care multi-specialty centers, dubbed bukas, to sound like the Filipino word for open. They're meant for the 28 million poorest Filipinos. The first such facility opened in early March. Doctors I spoke to say this so-called Bukas facility closes the healthcare gap between village-based health centers and tertiary hospitals. It has equipment and offers services not typically done in rural health centers, such as minor surgeries for patients not needing hospital admission. But reforms require funding. In the Philippines, public health care is financed through the health department's yearly national allocation, a locality's budget for health, other social welfare programs, and a patient's out-of-pocket spending. Revenue from betting centers managed by state-run firm Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office are also used to help pay hospital bills of indigent patients. In 2012, the Philippine government imposed so-called sin taxes on products like cigarettes. The taxes helped fund the health department and state health insurance firm PhilHealth. Sin taxes are also imposed on alcohol. And advocates hope electronic cigarettes or vapes can be included in the future. A Senate panel is probing some local officials for allegedly blocking the passage of an international convention calling for disclosures in the product labels of vapes. Among the direct beneficiaries of syntaxes is this hospital. The country's best and brightest doctors train here at the Philippine General Hospital, the country's largest tertiary government hospital. With less equipped medical facilities and infrastructure gaps in the provinces, the most complex of medical cases end up treated here at the hospital of last resort. Dr. Gerardo Legaspi, a surgeon popularly known as Dr. Gap, is the hospital's director. He is shoring up support from funders and legislators to expand Philippine General Hospital or PGH and to set up more such hospitals in the provinces. The role of PGH in training uh, is probably one, aside from the service, one of its biggest contribution to society uh, and to the healthcare uh, in general. So uh, we'd like to spread out those centers so that we can not only provide the service that we're providing here, but also to provide the training and research opportunities. The expansion to cater to more patients is ongoing. Dr. Gap says PGH, whose emergency room serves patients numbering over twice its capacity, is about giving patients their last ray of hope. Former PGH doctors would resort to pooling in their allowances each month to buy medicines for their patients who can't afford them. Indeed, underprivileged patients benefit most from PGH. I spoke to those who for months have been sleeping on the hospital sidewalks waiting for their turn to receive free painkillers or for a follow-up checkup for an ailment all other hospitals they went to could not treat. The patients' needs are overwhelming, but the doctors are pressing on. In the first place, there was no plan to leave at all. So because my belief is that you know, all my needs in life uh, I, I can have in the Philippines and in PGH, in UP, you know, as a teacher, as a surgeon, as a member of the community. In mid-March, a fire broke out at the hospital, briefly displacing patients. Doctors went on overtime, but it was just another day's work for them. Dr. Gap, the hospital director, once said that in order to survive PGH, one must envision what PGH could be in the future.